I'll show you my Thanos face. Oops. All right, and here are my rings, and I'm still completing my gauntlet. So let's get on with the lecture, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, so none of this. Oh man, don't need that. Okay, so today we will talk about Snap, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> PoseNet, which is uh, a way in which you can get real-time pose tracking from just your webcam and this is how it's going to look and I'll run a little quick tutorial on what PoseNet does but the capabilities that you have are fairly remarkable look at that full body tracking uh, upper upper body the face a few features on the face and if you step back further you can probably get the whole body out Okay, hands and feet, torso, all of that stuff. So what is going on? How can you get this on your computers? So PoseNet is a collection of libraries using techniques from machine learning, specifically deep learning, which I'm sure every one of you has heard about. Deep learning is this revolution thing which happened maybe five years ago, uh, bringing neural network technology to the mainstream. And uh, PoseNet is a specific application of neural network techniques to getting this kind of information from a single camera. High level idea is neural networks are trained using lots and lots of training data, meaning somebody went in and probably annotated millions and millions of pictures of people with hand labeled locations of these key points that you're seeing on my face and my body. So someone created these ginormous data sets and in the past decade, many companies invested a lot of money into creating such databases. The Kinect technology also is a machine learning technology that gets you depth data, uh, I mean depth-based uh, pose data. So many of these repositories have the roots in prior work. But at this time, the technology has matured significantly that it's plug and play from even Max MSP. And this can open up a wide array of design choices for you. Already you should be able to see that this is definitely not as stable as you would expect. So even when I'm not really moving, the pose estimates are fairly shaky. Okay, so it's not the best quality motion capture, but it's fine for many applications. What do you need to get started? So on Canvas, we just uploaded a folder called PoseNet and inside that, there will be just one max patch, which is main C Rawls. C Rawls stands for Connor Rawls, who built us this patch. Uh, I mean, the final patch, but it plugs into PoseNet patches. Download this, but this by itself will not work for you. And I will write up an announcement on how to get the whole thing running on your computer. There is a PoseNet, a Node for Max PoseNet repository, which you will have. To install on your Mac's uh, you know distributions so you have to download this whole folder and then put this main C rolls main crawls patch into that unzipped folder so it might look something like this for you so let me close this and begin from the beginning Okay, so once you unzip your folder and put in the patch that we just gave you, it will look like this, you open it up. The first time you play it, you have to install certain dependencies. So you would click on this bang, it will do some other processing in the backyard. Uh, I mean the background. <laughs> and it's gonna install certain dependencies inside those folders. So once it's complete, you're gonna have this complete icon uh, show up. And then you toggle it on. The camera feed will start playing. The rest of the patch is set up to parse out the data for all the joints and all the locations that are inbuilt. So everything from the nose, ear, shoulder, wrist, all major joints of the body are available to you as X, Y coordinates. In this specific patch, all I did was to pack the right wrist X, Y coordinates into a smaller 
list and send it out to a speed computation patch so you can see how the speed of the hand looks like when you do the kind of ballistic movement experiments we were doing earlier with full body motion capture so here is my movement tracking and this is the speed of my right wrist so i'm going to step back a little bit and we shall see how it looks so clearly it's noisy even when i don't move it keeps sh showing some speed but it's low the range is different now motion capture the way we were doing it in the lab uh, was in meters or millimeters fractional values these measurements are in pixel coordinates these are two-dimensional pixel coordinates so the scales are very different okay so now when i punch look at that look at that bell-shaped curve of the speed profile it's definitely not as clean as gold standard motion capture but as far as looking at quadrants looking at general distances between two points maybe two, two limbs and two parts of your body this is good enough i think it may need a lot of smoothing because it's so jittery but those are things that you know how to do and you may have to play around with parameters for smoothing now once this is up and running for you again this is a whole different way of enabling motion uh, based interaction and animation lots of people have done uh, you know driving a character animation with this real time people have done augmented reality kinds of applications with these things and the Thanos snapchat face filter that I just showed you also works off of these kinds of techniques but specifically limited to the face so if you have a filter if you have a picture that you can overlay given the locations of my eyes nose and you know the general shape and size of my face this is the information you need to get started so with that this is going to be a really brief lecture uh, if you have trouble installing these packages and getting these things to run send us an email and um, myself or our ta will help you out uh, thank you so much and uh, see you soon bye